All right, so our mechanics final exam, six problems, and you kind of know the topic. So problem number one <clears throat> is a it's a tough one to start off with. I might not even want to start with this problem because um, <clears throat> it's been a while since we've done this. Let's let's review these allowable stress design problems. Hey, there's either two types of problems. It's either going to be hey, what's the maximum force I can apply right here, or a problem like this, a problem like this one. And this is going to say, hey, what is the minimum diameter of the pins? So here, uh, this frame is subjected to a load of 4 kilonewtons, which acts on member ABD at D. Uh, determine the required diameter of the pins at D and C if the allowable shear stress is 40 MPA. Um, and pin C is subjected to double shear. D is subjected to single shear. All right, there are a few things that I needed to state in the problem statement that I didn't. Um, the thickness, so I'm talking like into the page right here, thickness of all members is 15 millimeters. And the allowable bearing stress is 80 MPA because remember for every pin I want you to test for shear failure and bearing failure All right, for every pin I want you to test for shear failure and bearing failure okay but for all these problems we've got to remember the statics right we've got to remember the statics so that we can find Hey, what it what is the force, the forces at pin D? What is happening at pin C? So let's do statics. And this is a, a tough statics one. Um, I, I want to know what's happening at pin C and pin D. Uh, so maybe by looking at bar uh, E C D. All right, I've got E, Y right here. All right, do you see that the force at pin C is a two-force member? So I, I can go, instead of writing a CX and a CY, remember for two-force members? Instead of writing CX and CY, I could go ahead and draw that force. I'll call it FBC, FCB right there. Um, there is a DX and a dy. So that pin right there at D, uh, there's a dx and a dy. All right, the four kilonewton load acts on member ABD, so I'm not going to draw that on member ECD. Uh, so anyway, there, there's my free body diagram for um, bar ECD. This is at a 45 degree angle right there. Uh, but anyway, uh, that member has four unknowns. So what if I had looked at uh, this member? I've got A, Y, A, X, F, and then remember D, X, and D. Remember, remember <clears throat> this bar feels equal and opposite what that bar feels. And I've got this 4 kilonewton force at 45 degrees. Uh, this one also has too many unknowns. Okay, so I mean, this is what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to DX and DY and FCB. Uh, oh, but, and what sometimes I completely forget about starting here, I could have started at the whole free body diagram. And then this is internal, this is internal. Yes, I do keep that four kilonewton force. Um, and so I don't think I'm going to go through all of this math, this statics, but for the whole free body diagram, I could sum the forces in X equals zero, sum the forces in Y equals zero, sum the moments. I'd probably sum the moments about A equals zero. And so I can solve, that only has three unknowns and three equations. I can solve for those three unknowns. I can solve for EY. I could also solve for AX and AY. Maybe I'll go ahead. AX, AY. 
then once I know EY, once I know EY, then I can look at this free body diagram of bar E C D. I can sum the forces in X equals zero. I can sum the forces in Y equals zero, and I can sum the moments. Uh, maybe some of the moments about D uh, would help me out the most. <clears throat> and then I would get, all right, here we go. DX, negative 5.657 kilonewtons. DY, 2.263 kilonewtons. And the force at CB is 8 kilonewtons. Uh, and also, those two at D mean that the magnitude, so A squared plus B squared, take the square root. Let me do that here. The magnitude on pin D, 5.657 squared, 2.263 squared, take the square root. The magnitude at D, 6.093 kilonewtons. Okay, so that, I'll, I'll admit that was a, a tougher statics uh, problem. But we drew some free body diagrams. Um, and remember back from statics, from frames and machines, from statics. Some of y'all had a good statics teacher, I remember. So I know you can do this. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you could look at the whole free body diagram. <clears throat> and that was helpful. Looking at the whole free body diagram, I only had three unknowns. And I have three equations I can solve for the three unknowns in the whole free body diagram. EX, I mean EY, <clears throat> AX, and AY. But then also breaking it apart and looking for the force. The force at this pin was at a two-force member. The force at this pin, I found a dx and a dy. But then I <clears throat> combined them to find the force at the pin. So this is what we needed to get out of our, our statics and our free body diagram. The force at pin C and the force at pin D. <clears throat> okay? Um... You, you, you'll, you'll have to do your statics, right? But you've got to come out with the forces at the pins or the forces at anything that might fail. You need to find the force in it. <clears throat> now, this type of problem, I'm given all of these forces and I want to find the, the minimum diameter or something. So, so yes, I should calculate a number for the force at the pin. I should calculate the number for the force at, in this member and th this pin. As opposed to, you know, those problems that say, hey, what's the maximum force P? If those problems have maximum force P, then you might have something like, instead of eight kilonewtons, it might be something like, uh, you know, 4.33 P. You know, you might have a P in there, and you would P, and you would bring that down to the next step of our problem to solve for P. Uh, but in this case, <clears throat> I know all the forces. I can find the force to the, the decimal point of the force at pin C and the force at pin D. All right, so let's look at pin C and let's, um, let's calculate the diameter we need at pin C. For every pin, I want you to test for shear failure and bearing failure. <clears throat> so at pin C, I've got a force of eight kilonewtons being applied. Let's look at shear failure. Let's look at shear failure. <clears throat> the tau <clears throat> is V over A. The tau that I'm going to allow it to get up to, all right, was given as 40 MPa. Let me, let me warn you. I, this, I probably should re rework this problem. <clears throat> that is the, the allowable right there. But uh, many times... I might say, hey, tau failure, it fails or it yields. If I say that the shear yield stress is 80 MPa, and I might say use a factor of safety of 2. Let, let's, let's pretend like I said that. It fails at 80. Let's use a factor of safety of 2. Okay, so yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm only going to allow it to get up to 40 MPA. Be, be able to use a factor of safety, right? If I tell you where it will fail or yield, and then I tell you use a factor of safety, you take that failure stress, divide it by the factor of safety, right? Because you're not going to allow it to get up to right where it's, a, it's probably going to fail at 80. 
Um, no, you're going to use the factor of safety, only going to allow it to get up to 40. All right, so 40 equals shear over area. This is in double shear, so sometimes it'll tell you pin C is subject to double shear, or it'll show you the side view. All right, even though this doesn't really look, you know, if it says double shear, or if it shows you the side view, so you can tell that it's in double shear, then what do you do? You take this shear force of 8, and you divide it by 2, if it's in double shear, for shear failure, and divide it by the area. Remember this tau is V over A, not VQ over IT. Let's don't use VQ over IT, let's use V over A. And so the area, well, we don't know the area because we're trying to find the diameter, and this is pi by 4 diameter squared, so we can solve for diameter. Uh, one last thing, though, I don't like 8 kilonewtons. Let's say 8,000 newtons divided by 2 divided by pi by 4 diameter squared. I'm going to let it go up to 40. Think about the units. Units MPA is newtons per millimeter squared. So, yeah, I think my units are going to be good. My answer is going to be in millimeters. I've got a diameter... 11.3 millimeters. I'm not going to box that in just yet. Maybe put a dotted line. That might be my answer, but that is the dia diameter that it would cause shear failure. All right, so I've tested shear failure. That's my, di my diameter that it will cause shear failure. All right, but what about bearing failure? Still looking at pin C, still looking at a force of eight kilonewtons. Bearing failure is force over area. I'm only going to allow it to get up to <clears throat> allowable bearing stress. How about we say failure, sorry, fail, what if I told you failure bearing stress was 160, then use a factor of safety of two. And so I'm only gonna allow it to get up to 80 MPA. <clears throat> My force here is 8,000 newtons. I'm not going to divide it by two, why not? Even though it's in double shear, um, that bearing force I'm looking at, at at the middle. So let's, let me try, attempt to draw this. All right, here's, maybe here's a, a very large pin. It's in double shear, so I've got one plate here, I've got one plate here, I've got one plate here, it's in double shear. If this is going at 8,000 newtons, then I think you see why if it's in double shear, if this is 8,000, then my each of my shears would be 8,000 divided by 2. But for bearing stress, I'm looking at the crushing bearing stress right here. So this whole 8,000 is acting on, on the middle. So I'm looking at the middle of the pin, bearing failure, the middle of the pin. So anyway, that's why we use the full 8,000, whether it, this was single or double shear, use that full force acting in the pin. Now, what area does bearing failure act over? We can just pretend that it is acting on this rectangle. If I cut this in half, if I cut this in half and looked at that rectangle, <clears throat> then that would be the area that it's acting. Uh, so this dimension would be the diameter. This dimension would be the thickness of the plate. The thickness of the plate, 15 millimeters, and the diameter is what I'm looking for. So right there, <clears throat> I can solve for diameter. Diameter, 6.67 millimeters. Maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe that's my answer. I'll box it in. Okay, so <clears throat> for pin C, what is the minimum diameter I should use? Either that one or that one. What is the minimum diameter I should use? It seems counterintuitive, but we've done this all semester. I think you know. I'm going to choose the larger one. Not just because I'm memorizing what Dr. Melnick is saying, no, but because I'm thinking about it, right? If it fails due to shear at 11.3 and it fails due to uh, bearing at 6.67, then my pin, you know, I can't go any lower than 11.3 or it would have failed <clears throat> beforehand. How about 14? Could I go 14? Yeah. Could I go 13? Yeah. Could I go 12? Yeah. Could I go 11? No. All right. So my minimum diameter for pin C, 11.3. All right. Let's look at pin D. <clears throat> pin D, 
the force at D, 6.093. So let's test shear failure. Tau is V over A, right? My tau allowable, 40. My V is 6093 newtons. I'm not dividing it by 2 because <coughs> the problem statement uh, said D is subject to single shear. And the area pi by 4, pi by 4, diameter squared. The diameter for pin D, 15.96 millimeters. That might be my answer. Uh, but let me test bearing failure. Bearing failure. Uh, I'm allowed to get up to 80. Uh, my 46093, I wouldn't divide it by 2. Even if it was in double shear, I wouldn't divide it by 2. And this would be the thickness of the plate times the diameter of the pin. The diameter of the pin, 5.08 millimeters. Uh, maybe that's my answer. All right, so what is my answer? What's the minimum diameter I can use for pin uh, D? This one, 15.96 millimeters 15.9 sometimes it'll say route you to the nearest millimeter i'd have to go up to 16 right so i'd need to use 16 millimeter diameter pins <clears throat> at d just to be careful and make sure that it doesn't get above any of the stresses that i'm going to allow it to get up above okay so let's take a step back we did statics and this was a tough one but we did, did statics to find the force at pin d and the force at pin c then we took those forces and we tested each pin for shear and be fa bearing failure. Each pin for shear and bearing failure. <clears throat> one of the pins was in double shear. One of the pins was in single shear. Uh, then I found two different diameters for each pin. I chose the larger one to make sure that it wouldn't fail. Right. So because I'm not going to allow it, this uh, allowable stress design problem. I'm going to design it so that <clears throat> it doesn't get past. The stress that I'm going, as an engineer, I'm going to allow it to get up to uh, these certain stresses right here. Okay? 